everybody, my name is Caitlin from Galton and Caitlin, and I'm back here today with this very special guest. Everybody, meet Morgan. Hi guys. She is my sister, beautiful and wonderful. True and true. Today, we are gonna be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of growing up in a hundred person town. That's right. We grew up in small town Saskatchewan, where there was, I think at one point, there was even less than a hundred people that lived in the town. Potentially, yeah. It's a village. It is a village. It's not even called a town. Not large enough to be a town. Yeah. What are our categories today? So today, we're gonna to be talking about education, sports, community, distance, social, upbringing. Oh. And then maybe like, whatever you guys throw at us, audience. Dalton. And by audience, we mean Dalton. <laughs> Hi, Dalton. Hi. <laughs> so let's go with number one. Let's go with education. What were the advantages from, so now, Let's back up a second. Caitlin and I are seven years apart. True story. She's older. Kidding. Oh. I'm older by seven years, so seven years wiser, <laughs> which means maybe I'm the most informed and versed at talking about education. <laughs> like, I guess that's true. You, you did went to more school. You did. You're going to more school than me. <laughs> you went to more school. Okay, so education. In a small town of 100 people, let's go pros. More one-on-one -on -one contact with the teacher. The class sizes are very small. How many people did you graduate with? I graduated with eight people. And I graduated with six. Yeah. What? I think at one point in time, we might have had up to 14 kids, 13, 14, oh, somewhere wow. in there. Large. Around like grade five, six, seven. Yeah. So yes, more one-on-one -on -one times with the teacher yeah. because you have such a small class. Granted, in a small school like that, you're often put together with a grade above or below you. Yeah. Or maybe both. Yeah. Were they? In their There's experience? seven, eight, and nine were in one classroom at one point. Whoa. Yeah. That's gym. Wow. Seven, eight, and nine, yeah. Class sizes started dwindling. One year, no one graduated. There wasn't a year, there was no one to graduate. So how do you have a party? I think we still did. Because <laughs> <laughs> why not? Or the one time one guy graduated and he got all the, all the awards. <laughs> all the scholarships, all the bursaries. He got it all. The whole thing was about him. Valedictorian. Yeah. <gasps> that, like all the awards. Oh, all the awards. Okay, other pro. I mean, you got to be a smart kid. Right? You got to be like, hey, you're in the top ten of your class. That's true. Like, if, hey, you were, you. if you were one of those smart kids, you were at the top. <laughs> I was at the top, and I was not smart. <laughs> so there's, there's opportunities there to win those scholarships and those bursaries for having some really decent grades. I think that curve was, whew, it was a strong curve. It was a strong curve. <laughs> would you so have true. more than, okay, wait, how many different teachers would be in the school, or would you have the same teacher teaching every single subject? No, we were we didn't have like a school a marm. That wasn't a thing. What's a marm? What's a marm? Can we Google it? <laughs> <laughs> like in the early 1900s, you had a school marm who like just taught everybody. Oh, oh. Was, like, all 20 kids. Right. But we had like a teacher would be assigned to like there was kindergarten and then there was one, two, three, four. The last one being 11, 12. So one teacher dedicated to two grades. Yeah. And that was like your homeroom, right? That teacher didn't teach you everything. And I guess we should also say that our school was kindergarten to grade 12, all in the same building. So how many kids in, were in the school K-12 to when you went? There was like 96, 100. Oh my god. Yeah, probably less now, to be honest. Oh yeah, I think they're down to like 50 or 40. Yeah. Lots of online education at this point though, where yeah. we didn't really have that. Yeah, my grade 12 year, they, they introduced a lot of online education. Speaking of that online education, because I didn't have that opportunity yeah. to take advantage of that, I had something different, and I believe that you got to experience this too, but when I started in the ninth grade, they actually drove us to a different city for school. So every Friday during the winter, we would get bundled up and we would drive over an hour to the closest high school and we would get the opportunity to take some classes that we didn't have in our school. That being um, construction, mechanics, welding, yep. um, aesthetics, Beauty. yeah. Beauty. Yeah, correct. Like air and stuff. You know, what do you have for the people who don't want to take instruction like me? <laughs> you gotta take Didn't, beauty. All of these great classes, but we we couldn't take them in our own school. We had to drive over an hour away. So while that was a disadvantage to drive over an hour, we at least got the opportunity to take those. So I made a table, I made a chair. Nice. It took me a semester to make it, but I made it. <laughs> yeah, you did. 
Yeah, you did. <laughs> when we talk about school, you really just, you can link right into sports. And there were some huge advantages there, and some disadvantages, but huge advantages. advantages. You got to do all the sports. Like every single one. You didn't have to try out and then not get on the team because sometimes you were forced to be on the team so that there could be a team. <laughs> exactly. I got forced to do curling just so that there could be a curling team. Yeah, so I had the opportunity to travel for some sports as well. School was in a, a district with a lot of other schools so we always played against them yeah. as well. Yeah. You make a lot of friends that way. So yeah, sports. Yeah. Uh, sports. Most valuable player or best... Most player. improved. <laughs> <laughs> When I graduated, I got best female athlete, which is insane because I am not good. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I got that $25 check that went along with that pretty little award. So, okay. uh, check. I did. Did you guys have like canteens at your events? If so, oh. what did you what did you eat? Uh, we had those canteens. So apparently this isn't a thing in some larger centers. Like we would go to a sporting event at any school nearby and the first thing we would want to eat is taco in a bag. Everyone had taco in a bag. Uh, well, they don't know what that is. You need to try it! Your mom didn't make 40 pounds of hamburger the night before a volleyball game? Like, that just blows my mind. You take a bag of Doritos, crunch it up, you cut the top off, and put all your taco toppings in there. It's Anything genius. You want. It, it is genius. Ground beef. It. She had it at her wedding. This is my midnight lunch and it was delicious. <laughs> your canteen was in your school and sometimes if you were special and you were on the SRC, Ooh, right? The like president of the SRC. President of the SRC. You had a key to that room and you could just go and get all the pops and candies that you wanted. And that's how I got these thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Except some disadvantages of being a small town, it's like a lot of people are forced to play and they don't want to play or are not very good. So some years the team would be really good because they're filled with good players and that's everyone. But sometimes, some years you would just not be good at all and you'd have to go against much larger towns or even cities that have a lot of people try out and they pick their top best where we're struggling just to make a team. So. so we would get crushed. Crushed. <laughs> Talking 24 to floor. zero. But here's the best thing about that is it built resiliency. That's true. Which is one of the most important characteristics, from my opinion, that a person can have is resiliency. Mm -hmm. It serves you throughout your entire life. One of the other advantages you had to being on a team was that you had a community surrounding you that supported you. So whether it be ball games or volleyball games or curling games, you had almost the whole community there because the what, what else did they have to do? Yeah. They would come and watch you, they would cheer you on, they're buying your tickets to all of your fundraisers, oh, yeah. they're spending their hard earned money Money to support you in having the fun that you're having. So totally. that's a huge advantage to living in a small town is yeah. you have that support. The community is like probably the number one biggest thing about growing up in a small town. Yeah. So everyone's there for you and like everyone. You know every single person in the town. You know their family, their extended family. If you ever need help, if you're like stuck on the side of the road because of flat tire, guarantee the person that drives by, you're gonna know them and they're gonna stop and help you up. So true. Disadvantage of living in a small town community, everyone knows everybody. <laughs> when you're a teenager trying to get into some hoodlum trouble, everyone is watching you. And, and they know calling who your, your mom. Are. <laughs> totally. They're calling your mom, and the worst, worst part is you're probably related. And oh, so you no. can't you can't get away with anything. And not a lot of boys to, you know. Hit on because you hate all of them because there's only 12 of them and you're related to most of them. <laughs> so true. That's maybe the other part is that um, you shared a boy with all your friends. <laughs> there would be a boy that I dated, that my friend dated, that my friend dated, that my cousin dated. That's like three stopped. cute boys. Right. Might as well share. And like, were they actually cute though? Like our pool was so small that sure there might be three that look cute, but once you get into the bigger world, <laughs> you realize they're not so cute. So let's talk about what's actually in our town so that the audience can get a grasp of how small it really is. I would love to know. I don't know how many streets there are. I want to say like, like first, second, third, fourth street. I think fort might be. Yeah, like seven. Seven like, cause streets. Because one's a highway. <laughs> We also have a post office. We had a bank, but I think by when I was in grade eight or nine, the bank shut down. I'm going to reverse there because it's not a bank. It's a credit union, which is important. Um, it's important to know <laughs> these small towns. Well, Morgan works. <laughs> I don't work for a credit union. Okay, well, I work for a bank. 
<laughs> which goes against everything. However, we had a credit union and small towns thrived on credit unions because the big banks weren't in these small villages to service them. It was the credit unions that went in. It's a whole other video to get on this topic. <laughs> so we're just gonna cut it there. We had a credit union. We had a credit union. We have a grocery store that was community run. Like, yes, yeah. is important to say. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's mostly like, I think they got paid something, but like, it's mostly a volunteer. Yeah, and when I was growing up, we didn't always have that grocery store. We often had to drive to another town to get like your staples, like milk or bread. But if you wanted anything beyond that, and a couple mm. of canned goods, anything beyond that, you were driving over an hour. So if you were like, oh, I'm just craving some fish sticks, <laughs> good luck. You can't, yes. even, can't even fish. You can't even <laughs> fish. <laughs> There's nowhere to fish. But we did have community run. Theater. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. They would get movies from that were like way past, like they probably already came out on DVD. <laughs> probably. <laughs> it's but yeah, we get reels and it would, it would also community run. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it'd be hard to be like, we need to find Joe. He's got a set up there. Where's Joe? Is he at the bar again? <laughs> oh, speaking of which, we had a bar. We also had a bar. <laughs> wow, those are all the things that we have. <laughs> Social. So The party. Oh, Do you know what? I think this is where it's so much better than like growing up in a city. Yes, huge advantages. Huge advantage. Yeah. So while you're like a long ways away from all of these other towns, but you kind of all come together to form one big social community. Dash. Yeah. And you get to be friends with so many other people from all different schools, like yeah. so far away. Some of them are also your cousins. <laughs> <laughs> You're always gonna find a cousin at a party. <laughs> There'd be like, yeah, like 10, 12 surrounding towns, and you know, on a weekend, you'll hear about some party that's happening in town, four towns over, and you go there, and every single town has showed up. You know? And you like, you get a van, right? Like some mom yeah. lends you their van, and you <laughs> pick up like one kid, and then you drive 20 miles, and you pick up another yeah. kid, and 20 miles, and you pick up another kid until that van is full. Both. And where do the parties take place? Usually, this in is important. A pit. <laughs> gravel pits. It's always gravel pits or a field or a Quonset. Gravel pits, fields, Quonsets, dams. Dams. Wait, by the dome. Hold up. What's a Quonset? A Quonset is a, a structure that holds your. It's in a dome. Combine. <laughs> Farmer's got one. Look, it's a combine. <laughs> With giant metal doors and push open. Best place to go rollerblading. Yeah! Yeah! It's flat cement. You want surface. a skateboard, scooter, or rollerblade? The Quonset. Insert. Everywhere else is gravel. Is there a difference? Do you think there's a difference between, like, your seven year age, age difference party? Like, do you think it's quite the same every year? Or do you know what? Like, there's. <laughs> Also with small towns, there's like a lot of people that never that never leave the town even after they graduate. So there's definitely people that me and Morgan have both partied with. Oh, that's awkward. And it's awkward. And it's awkward because they're a lot older when they're partying with me. But there's so many people would be like, "You must be Morgan's sister." And I'd be like, "Oh God, oh. he's so dashy." <laughs> and that goes for me too, where we had young parents. So there's also people that I partied with that were like, "I'm friends with your mom and dad." <laughs> <laughs> So like, what do you want? How do we, how do we relate our upbringing to living in a small town versus a big city? Well, there is a saying: it takes a village to raise a child, and it's it's true, and it's probably true also in a city. There's people, but when you live in a village, it's very true. The whole village is really raising you. Yeah, I remember we get picked up on the bus at 6:30 in the morning. School didn't start until nine, so it's an hour and a half drive, and in the middle of winter. So we often took extra stuff with us just in case we got storm stayed and the buses couldn't run. And our parents would tell us, Just go to someone's house, house if you're storm stayed. And that often wouldn't even be the person that we were um, closest to, whether it be by relation or whether it be you're going to your best friend's house. Sometimes it was just like, these pers this person lives closest to the school, go to their house. The, the upbringing, you're not just raised by your parents, you're raised by the entire community, for yeah. sure. This is so wholesome. I love this. Like when I think about having kids and stuff, I it's not I don't want to not live in a small town, but like I wish I could raise all my kids in a small town. I want them to have the opportunities for both worlds. Yeah, and like, do you know what? Sometimes I find city kids are a little bit also rude. And I think growing up in a small town, it's like all those people are holding you accountable. Every single person that's in that town is like, hey, you're being a shit right now. Maybe we need like that movie with Tom Hanks and, and what's her face? The Eye? Is that what it's called? Where everybody's watching you? <gasps> oh, Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye. No. <laughs> no, that's not Tom <laughs> no. Hanks. The Red Eye? Red? Red Room? 
The circle. The circle. The circle. Everybody's watching you and you are accountable to that shit because everybody can see what you're doing. You can't just and go and, and drive through a grocery store or drive through a hockey rink. We had a hockey rink, by the way. Driving through a grocery store, what does that mean? Mm. Like physically driving physically. through? He was driving along, do 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 do, and was like, I'm gonna go pick up some peas. He's like, I'm gonna hit the brake. Oop, no I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> How hard slash fast did you decide that you were gone? I feel like with a lot of people, you're thinking like, I just need to get out. You know, you want to experience the rest of the world, of course. And so, like, I, I knew early on that I wanted to leave. <laughs> Not that I, yeah, like, I love yeah. loved a small town, but yeah. I felt I stuck out in the town a bit. So I was, like, a, the artistic child. But when I moved away, I soon realized that I was just, I was at the bottom of the artistic child pot when it came to the city, so. I was, I was special there, I'm not so special here. Hey. But <laughs> I went away to university and I thought like, oh, this is gonna be great. Mm. Uh, and then you get your grades and you get your marks back on your essays and, and again, you realized you're not the smart one anymore. Bottom of the pot. So here was my big city dreams. I anticipated to go get a four year degree in political science, go to law school, study criminal law, and I was going to defend the people that didn't commit the crimes. Working until 10 p.m. every night, and I was gonna be going home at 10.30 p.m. with my glass of wine and my little salad out of plastic, and I was just gonna sit in my bathtub until 6 a.m. the next morning. And that was like, that was my that dream. Was your dream. Crazy. That was my wow. dream. What a lonely life that would have been. But. Life changes. You are allowed to change your mind every single day. Every single day. Every single day. And that's what it was like growing up in a small town. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a blast. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification button so that you can be reminded every time that we post a video. Oh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. You guys can check me out on Instagram at meet.morgan and you can also check out my blog at meetmorganblog.com. We'll see you next week. I won't. Bye. Bye.